Because for some reason, for some reason, the conclusion that every single other Western or, or rather developed country in the world ha has come to, we haven't been able to come to. In Australia, PrEP is $8 a month. In the United States, it's almost $2,000 a month because we have legislated a set of incentives and we have legislated a system that allows that to happen. You guys remember that back in 2019 when AOC was going off on the CEO of a, of a drug company that has HIV medication that is absolutely life saving. Seems pretty awesome except she's talking about how expensive it is and how inaccessible it could be for folks. Well, as a judge, the rule is gonna be even more inaccessible for certain folks. Let's go to details of this ruling. So this federal judge in Texas, in Texas on Wednesday declared unconstitutional an Affordable Care Act requirement that insurers and employers offer plans that offer HIV prevention drugs for free, saying it violates, get this, the religious freedom of a Christian owned company. HIV prevention, Christian owned company. See if you can find that connection. I'll tell you, the mandate, the plaintiffs argued in its initial complaint, forces religious employers to provide coverage for drugs that facilitate and encourage homosexual behavior, prostitution, sexual promiscuity, and intravenous drug use. Because we just like to say that's the only folks that ever encounter HIV. Now, your employer gets to decide which life-saving drugs that they think that you deserve based off of their Christian values. So if you don't have their values, F you. What if you quit and you say, you know, I don't want to deal with your values either? Did you get a good recommendation because that's your belief system? No. Anyways, um, so these uh, religious folks have then continued trying to run other folks' lives. So here's some info on how the whole thing works uh, with this particular drug and how it's saving so many lives. Let's watch more. We begin with a major medical study that could be a game changer in the global fight against HIV. It finds that drug treatment alone may be the best defense to stop the spread of the virus. The findings are published in the medical journal The Lancet, and it could have huge implications around the world. Renee Filipponi joins us now. The study took place over eight years, included nearly 1,000 gay male couples where one partner had HIV. Now, the person with the virus was on these suppressive anti retrovirals and despite having unprotected sex with their partner there were no cases where HIV was passed between the pair now there have been studies on this before looking at heterosexual couples but researchers say this one settles any doubts now antiretrovirals are basically a combination of drugs that are taken every day to stop HIV from replicating in the body and over time it reduces the amount of the virus in the blood to levels that are undetectable there's this jail in Alabama, uh, and it's headed by this one particular sheriff. You're going to hear his name many, many, many times. But right now, what they've been doing is holding pregnant women hostage illegally longer than they should be uh, because they're afraid about what they might do with their pregnancies, or what they assume will happen with their pregnancies. Let's go to some details because one of these uh, folks that basically made the, the entire story here, her name is Ashley Banks. Let's go to her story. Uh, they arrested her on May 25th of this year with a small amount of marijuana and a pistol without a permit to carry. Okay, some some crimes there. Under normal circumstances, the 23-year-old from Gadsden, Gadsden would have been able to post bond and leave jail until a criminal trial. But Banks admitted to smoking pot on the same day that she found out she was pregnant, two days before her arrest. In Etowah County, that meant she could not leave jail unless she entered drug rehab, leaving her in limbo for three effing months. Three months in limbo because she couldn't uh, enter drug rehab, which she probably didn't need. We're going to get to those details. But first, I mentioned Etowah County Jail down there in Alabama. You might remember that name uh, of that jail or that county because they were in the news before. Watch. An Alabama sheriff was defiant today as he defended his practice of pocketing leftover money from the inmates' food budget. It's been legal since 1939. Some accuse him of turning the jail into his personal piggy bank. Etowah County Sheriff Todd Endrickens proud of his jail food. These meal trays serve to inmates every day. This is a jail. This is not a bed and breakfast. If you're used to eating grandma's fried chicken, ordering pizza several times a week, you're not going to be happy. But critics say he is mostly fed himself. Over the last three years, the sheriff's food program has run under budget, letting him pocket the leftovers. $750,000, all of it taxpayer money. 
Do you agree that the optics of this are terrible? The optics, yes, but I can't, I can't change the opti optics. More optics. Last September, Entrican and his wife bought this $740,000 beach house along Alabama's Gulf Coast. Because a Depression-era state law makes Alabama sheriffs personally responsible for feeding inmates, the performance bonus Entrican gave himself is legal. It's totally legal, but he did eventually face the wrath of his constituents because that went out. That was back in uh, 2018. But in June, let's go to this, he lost his re-election campaign to a fellow Republican primary challenger. And in July, the Alabama State Bureau of Investigation, get this, opened an investigation on charges that Intrican, that same sheriff who don't want you going home for your mama's fried chicken, allegedly had sex with underage girls multiple times during the 90s, an allegation that he, of course, denies. More about him. He's reportedly gone after those who also got between him and his money that he was skimming off the top from the jail. Last February, a 20-year-old was arrested for drug possession four days after criticizing Intrican in an interview in which he said the sheriff had paid him to mow the lawn at his 2015 at his home in 2015 with checks that said Sheriff Todd Intrican food provision account on them directly from what he was supposed to be using for these inmates in their food to then paying somebody to mow his lawn then getting mad at them for exposing what he paid them with okay back to this whole thing about uh, in, uh, imprisoning pregnant women because there's more examples i promise i'm gonna let you jump in here really fast francesca because one more because several pregnant women and new moms accused of, ex of exposing their fetuses to drugs have been held for weeks or months inside the Etowah County Detention Center under special bond conditions that require rehab and $10,000 cash. Uh, one more piece, one more part about this. Uh, Intrican was skimming off the top, buying himself $750,000 beach homes, but also, again, about the, that food that was in the prison, about the conditions of the prison, about all that extra money that he was putting in his pocket, maybe could have gone to help solve these problems. Watch. Again, uh, Todd Intrigan is gone, but this jail has always been pulling this and they probably continue to think they can do so.